Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to CoasterNet Update. We've got some breaking news out of Williamsburg, Virginia, where a number of us today have received an interesting email about uh, the 2020 season there. Now, Danny, uh, you know, we've been talking about the 2020 roller coaster uh, at Busch Gardens Williamsburg for a very, very long time. Um, you yes. know, a quick recap. You know, they filed for a 315-foot height waiver uh, that was denied because of it being vague. Um, you know, so they've come back now, and now everything looks to seems to be in order. Um, so uh, so, so we're, we're moving ahead because we got this official email that says that uh, something, it seems like something will be announced on July 30th of this year for 2020. Um, you know, Danny, uh, well, what do we know about this roller coaster so far? Well, <laughs> we think we know a lot, right? We, we uh, think we know a lot. We think we know a lot. We think we think we know that it's going to have this uh, this this big spike that goes up backwards. We, we, we think that we know that it's going to have some sort of top hat. We think that we know it's going to have some sort of dive down to the Rhine River. Uh, and we think that it might be Intamin, maybe, um, or, or something very similar. Uh, but, but Intamin seems to be the front runner. And we also think that it's going to be something along the lines of uh, that soaring with Dragon Ride, that ride over in China that has the same uh, paint job as, uh, as Sky Rush there. It's a forward, backward, forward, launch into a non-inverting loop. People like to look at that one. Um, a lot of people have also made the comparison to the 2021 coaster coming to Park Asterix, which has a very similar type of thing, sort of in the middle of the ride with the switch track. Um, you know, uh, so those are the things that we think we sort of know. Um, now, I don't, I don't know if there's been footers or blueprints leaked out there or not. Um, I, I haven't seen any. That doesn't mean they're not out there. They haven't been out there. Maybe, maybe I just haven't been. Uh, I, I, I remember seeing a whole lot of like construction and elevation. Saw a rendering and a slide some time ago as yeah. well that, that might have helped us out a little bit, but it really didn't show us anything new. So I, I, I don't know. We think we know a lot, but what we really know, there's not, there's not much out there. Well, and a lot of people are throwing around different numbers because of that 315-foot uh, height waiver that, that the park applied for. Um, so, you know, a number, a number of different sites are throwing out there, uh, you know, the 179-foot for the spike, 159-foot top hat, um, and then a 190 foot drop to the river. Uh, and, and based on that slide, somewhere of a, you know, 76 miles an hour, uh, something like that. I, and like you said, I think that park has streaks, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of no limits creations out on YouTube that you can go see it. Cause they announced that I think at IAPA this year, sometime around then. Um, so, so we know that's coming and I think that's gonna, you know, look a lot like this coaster. I think when all is said and done. But I think what we really want to focus on here tonight um, is this new email we sent uh, or were sent today. And, and it seems like uh, we're going to have another Roman, um, another Roman themed roller coaster here that, that we, we kind of suspected that it was going to go in that area of the park. Um, and it says uh, there's a little video of it of, and the video is like a flag, a Roman, uh, you know, a banner flag waving uh, behind a, uh, you know, what it seems like a field, like almost like a starry field, like a space type field. And it says underneath it, escapes, escape Pluto's twisted underworld and be immortalized in the garden of the gods. Uh, so it seems like Pluto is going to be the main theme here. Now we, we searched uh, for some trademarks and no trademarks have been filed as of yet. Um right. So we're trying to come up with something, and, and you know, if you, if you think of what we just talked about, about how this ride is going to be laid out, uh, it kind of fits with this story, and, and you kind of like tried to piece a little story together for us based on what we've seen in the Park S. Streaks video. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot of different things here. Um, you know, th this, this video, right, that, uh, this six-second video sent in this email, um, 
the little caption underneath it says, escape Pluto's twisted underworld and be immortalized in the garden of the gods. Okay, so uh, you and I started to do what we typically like to do when we get little tidbits of information here. We looked at this image, which really looks like it's some sort, it might look like a crown, it might look like a scepter. It looks more to me like a, like a staff or a scepter of some sort. And uh, it seems to be some sort of variation of either the Neptune or, uh, or Pluto uh, symbol, I guess, if you, for Roman mythology. More so like the Pluto symbol. Uh, but but it's, it's not the only thing there. It's sort of coming out of something else. So we started to look at um, some different things. I'll get up my, uh, my tabs that I have opened up. <laughs> And, um, you know, first we looked at Pluto and what, the, you know, the background of Pluto is, um, not the planet. In Roman mythology, uh, classical mythology, if you will, uh, Pluto was the ruler of the underworld. Um, now, that is commonly known as Hades in Greek mythology. So Pluto and Hades, in some sense, are counterparts. Well, However... If if, if you know anything about mythology, the Romans basically just stole every story or most of the stories from the Greeks and renamed all the main characters to make them Roman. So, so that's why you have these counterparts from between Greek and Roman mythology. Right. And if you, uh, in the Festa Italia area of the park where you have Apollo's Chariot and uh, Tempesto and Roman Rapids... Uh, that is very Roman themed, as opposed to the San Marco area of Italy, which is which is which is different. So this is a very Roman uh, style Italy here. So this is what we're going for here. Um, now Pluto did not have the negative connotation historically that Hades often does, uh, and the Roman depiction of the underworld is not you know hellfire and you know th that sort of negative connotation that. Hades and the Christianity uh, interpretation of the underworld uh, is, is often described as. So from there, we did some more work on Pluto, and we said, well, do, do Pluto and Neptune, what's the connection uh, there? Uh, so again, when we go to Roman mythology, we find out that um, there were three brother gods Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto, and they were charged with ruling the worlds after their father, Saturn, had, had died. Jupiter became the ruler of the sky, Neptune became the ruler of the sea, and Pluto became the ruler of the underworld. Now, eventually, and I'm, I'm reading this from uh, mythology.net here, um, eventually Jupiter became the supreme god who ruled all of the earth and sky, Neptune stayed in the sea, and Pluto remained in the underworld, and eventually became known as the god of the afterlife, and sort of the overseer of the afterlife. Um, now, th there's, there's a couple other stories that go on here, but as we, as we go down further... Um, we read that Pluto holds a key and a scepter, which he uses to protect his kingdom and guard the dead from escaping. And then we go down to the actual idea of the Roman underworld. And I'll, I'll read this, uh, word, word for word here. Um, the Roman underworld, uh, was not the burning dark and hellish place commonly depicted in Christianity. The Roman underworld consisted of five parts where all of the departed, both good and bad, eventually pass through uh, at the time of their death. The first three divisions consisted of a journey of the souls, which they were sorted into good and bad. After crossing the waters of the river Styx, the good souls eventually end up in Elysium, which is the land of the blessed, and lived out their eternity in peace and happiness. Only the evil ended up in Tartarus, the region of torment. So, to me... There And if we look up the uh, what Elysium and the Elysian Fields, uh, the Elysian Fields, a short description of that, is um, the, uh, essentially the Elysian Fields are uh, the paradise where the guards spent eternity uh, in the afterlife. And uh, it says here, the inhabitants are believed to live in perfect happiness similar to the Christian Garden of Eden. Um, so th Wait, there's... Which, which ties you... Gardens. Which ties you right to that end of that sentence of ending up in the garden. Of the right. Garden. So, 
Right. So exactly. So again, that the caption on this video we were sent says, escape Pluto's twisted underworld and be immortalized in the garden of the gods. So basically what's happening here is if we go back to the, uh, the idea of the underworld, in order to be sorted into either uh, good or bad, um, you have to go through uh, this sorting process. The first three divisions, which I interpret as maybe a forward, backward, forward launch yeah. seat, uh, can, that's the journey of the souls where you're sorted. And then after you cross the waters of the river Styx, which may be our Rhine River dive, the good souls eventually end up in the Elysian Gardens. So that may be your storyline that you're trying to tell with this ride. So then you had thought, well, is there an actual name for the Roman underworld? Or did, was it just known as the underworld? At, some, at one point, it was called Hades. Hades was the actual place as well as the god. But you found an actual name for the Roman underworld. So, so, so at the one point you have uh, the word Avernus, which is a kind of cool name, and I, I kind of threw that about like thinking, well, maybe, maybe that has something to do calling the roller coaster Avernus, which is the entrance to the underworld. But then also there's this inferno uh, word that is sometimes tied to the Roman uh, underworld. It's called the inferno. Uh, we yes. see that in literature as well. And, and I kind of jumped to the conclusion of, well, you know, you have Apollo's chariot, uh, you know, a few hundred feet away. Why yeah. not call this Pluto's Inferno? Um, and that, I think that's a real strong name. It, it, and like you said, it has that same cadence. It, it, just, it, it just rolls off the tongue. Pluto's Inferno, like Apollo's chariot. Uh, like it, it's a very, very, it, they connect well. They, they complement each other. I think uh, when we're talking about roller coaster names, these two coasters are, are seemingly going to be pretty close to one another. So for them to have similar names that kind of like mirror each other, I think would be really cool. So I, and, and there is a lot of history in the Bush and SeaWorld parks where the roller coaster name isn't just the name. It's, it sort of implies a certain story, whether or not, the ride is themed. Apollo's Chariot. That, that sort of conjures up a certain image. Um, and when you think of a roller coaster named Apollo's Chariot, they say it as you exit the station. Enjoy your journey to the sun on the wings of Apollo's Chariot. Mm -hmm. And they sort of paint a picture for you as you leave the station. And having multiple words in the name of a ride is not something that Bush Gardens and the SeaWorld Parks have been afraid to do. Electric Eel, uh, Journey to Atlantis, Cobra's Curse, Cheetah Hunt, yeah. uh, Loch Ness Monster. I, and again, Loch Ness Monster is more of just a creature more than anything, but Cobra's Curse. Cobra's Curse paints a picture in your mind as to what is actually going on. It's just, it's not just the name, it's not just Cobra, okay, the yeah. rotten snake. Cobra's Curse, that implies that there's some sort of story going on here. Same thing with Apollo's Chariot in the same sense. Uh, cheetah Hunt, it's, you could just name it Cheetah. Yeah. But Cheetah Hunt implies that you are doing something. Pluto's Inferno, I think sort of, or, or something along those lines, sort of implies the same sort of thing. And you like to joke around, oh, well, you know, Raptor tells a story, right? <laughs> uh, but it's, it's called Raptor, right? So when you, when you hear Pluto's Inferno, that to me implies that, okay, it's not just five. You could call it Inferno and nobody would know the difference. Yeah. Um, there's an SLC somewhere overseas called Fire Whip, and it has a really nice paint job where there's flames on the supports. But that doesn't mean anything to us. Pluto's Inferno, to me, conjures up the same sort of imagery and the same sort of idea of a story being told. It's, Verbolton is almost the opposite, because Verbolton sounds just like a name yeah. for, until you know that Verbolton means forbidden and when you think of verbolton as the pun to mean forbidden for you wouldn't just be like oh the ride's forbidden well, what does that mean that means we're gonna go do something that's forbidden so even verbolton in a certain sense has that same sort of uh sort of has that same sort of feel to it 
So I, I, I think there's, I think there's a lot to, I think there's a lot to consider in a name such as that. And maybe that, that may not be exactly what we get, but I, I would seem to think if this is the route they're going, uh, which it seems they would be, and it makes perfect sense if you go off of this teaser anyways, what we've come up with here. I think Pluto's Inferno would, would be a fine name, and I, I think it would represent the story that you're trying to tell very well. Yeah, uh, and I, I think they gave us just enough here to, to start you know, speculating as to what, what might be happening um, you know, like you said, is this the final name? I don't know. Would it's, would this be a cool name? Absolutely. Um, you, you know, it's just, it just evokes that. And, and like when I think of it, like you think of Apollo's chariot and you think about going high up into the air where, where you're taking those, those big lift hills and those big airtime hills, uh, mm -hmm. where, where this is the opposite of that, that, that Pluto's inferno where you're diving towards the river and then, you know, and, and supposedly that top hat element might even have a dive element on it a little holding break at the top. So uh, you'd be diving down towards the river. So I, I just think both wave breaker, you're breaking waves. <laughs> uh, you know, same, same sort of thing. Um, or Hagrid's <laughs> magical creep. Oh, sorry. Um, whatever the name of that is. Uh, so, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, we're going to find out, uh, hopefully they send out a few more teasers here uh, that it seems like, and they put it in Roman numerals uh, to, to really lay on that heavy Rome stuff. Uh, that that it looks like the end of July we are going to get an announcement and and like we said at the beginning, uh, you know the 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 specifications of this ride uh, may not be the most interesting part because we know so much about it or we think we know so much about it but indeed uh, it, it's probably the theme here and how much theming because lately SeaWorld has not been adding a whole lot of theming to their rides if you think of like Mako and. Um, Electric Eel and Tidal Twister, um, you know. They do a with, nice sign, and then that's, the, you know, maybe a decent cue, and then that's kind of about it. And, and like, Cobra, Cobra's Curse is really the last really themed-out coaster that they've done, and that's pretty recent, so here's hoping uh, that they do something really cool with this one as well. Uh, so, uh, as always, I am Andy Robarczyk from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm Danny Miller from Binghamton, New York. <laughs> right on, Ride Warriors. Thanks, guys. See you next time.